This is a story. And in this story, I'm going to use spaces. Places. To paint a picture of the human heart. Not the beating heart in your chest, but the soul. Just as sure as you are sitting in this room, you have a soul. You have a space just like this. This story illustrates a reckoning, a confrontation that takes place in the heart of every human being at one point in their life or another. So let's begin. A knock at the door. A letter. They've come to my door before. In fact, they come every day now. Sometimes they sit in piles. I know they come from the one who made me. I've pried them open before. I've taken a peek, I've looked, and what I began to read, or what I've heard they say, scared me. They are letters of the law. I know that much, but I've stopped looking. I know some of the terms, like sin, or that there's a Ten Commandments, or something along the lines of things you should do or shouldn't do, and I chalked most of this up to I'm basically a good person and nobody can be perfect so why even read these letters but still a knock at the door another letter and they pile I open one they read this is a notice regarding payment due for your sin my eyes glance over the letter and I read my standing is in sin this is backed up entirely by Laws that I've broken, commands I've not followed. There are dates, there are times. This one's for just this morning. Everything has a cost. Each one of these actions is death. At the bottom it says, my current standing is in sin. Full payment is required. Death. Physical, spiritual, and eternal. This is a debt that will be collected. I sit and I wait. I sit and I wait. Time passes. I fear the worst. The knock never sounds unfriendly to me, like the army is going to barge in. It's not like that. It sounds like the knock of a friend. That's the one thing that's kept me sane. These letters can't mean this. I close the letter. I put it down. I wait. Time has gone by and still these letters come. They tell me all of the sins I've committed. If I ignore them, the feeling in my chest dulls. But when I open them, it sharpens. I can see very clearly that I have failed. I even tried one time to remedy some of these problems and reduce the frequency of these letters. Like if I behaved better or if I started to obey more. And that only made me more exhausted because the letters continued to arrive. And then there's the pile of letters that have been coming my entire life. Here in the floor. How can any one person pay these off? One day I woke to a knock. The same knock. That somehow friendly knock. But there's an urgency in that knock today. Then a voice friend turn the page over for good news all this time i'd never thought to read further in if i were to boil everything that i have read for years and years on these letters as i see the law and how i've broken it what could this other side say to me Good news. There it is. Right in front of me. The answer. The other side says grace. How? Because he paid the debt. He conquered death. 
It says here that the wages of sin is death, just like the other side reads. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. How can this be? It goes on to say that the Creator of the world, my Creator, the Son of God, who is author of the law, the one I've broken, came to live here, had a physical body just like mine, lived a life according to the law he wrote, perfectly, never earning a bill of trespass like I have, like all of these letters strewn about in my heart. Then he gave his life, willingly to be punished for me in death. He received this punishment for me, in my stead. It says that God raised him from the dead and that he lives today, knocks at the door of my heart, a king of a kingdom that is to come, a savior who saves, a bringer of life, one who wishes to take this death off of me. I'd no longer be a debtor like this. I could be bought by him, by his sacrifice, and that I would follow his command to love, that he would remain in the Father's love and that I would remain in his. This is an easy yoke. This is a light burden. I should have answered the door all along. Jesus, the Son of God, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. His word says, For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Today I am free. Jesus Christ, my friend, has set me free. And for whom the Son sets free is free indeed. This is a picture of the heart, clothed in grace, no longer a debtor to the law, and gladly a debtor to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith, the creator of all things, God of the universe, my creator, my savior. The word gospel means good news, and it really is good news. It is the record of everything this story tells and how it relates to you. It is the grace of God for anyone who will accept it. It is not a call to better behavior. It is freedom from the old law of sin and death. That's why you don't see anyone sad at a baptism. It represents the death of that old life in slavery to sin and resurrection in Christ. You were either in sin or in Christ. And when you are in Christ, you are clothed in grace. In sin, you are burdened by sin. But after Jesus and in his resurrection, you are a child of God. The bills keep coming. And you might even think you've got to clean up your house, but the Savior has done the work. When the bills come to the door, they are marked paid, paid by the Son of God. He says his command is to love one another as he has loved us. He remains in his Father's love because he obeyed his Father's commandments, and we obey his commands to love one another as he's loved us. Once you open the door and he lives with you, he's in the heart. Cleaning up the bills, behaving a little bit better, avoiding trespassing the law is love because he's done the work. It's faith in Jesus because he's done the work. Do the math. These bills say death. One of these says death as much as a thousand of these say death. But whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Free.
Our actions can't save us. He saved us. And when we act, it is in love and faith in Him. That's why, as the Word says, no one can boast. No one can be proud of themselves. But they can point to their Savior. They can point to their paid bills. They can point to the Son of God. May His kingdom come. May you hear the knock. May you open that door. His kingdom is coming. He brings life. And you can share in that. It's resurrection. It's good news. All you have to do is open the door. All you have to do is let him in. This is the knock of a friend. He wants to live life with you. You don't have to clean up your house. You don't have to shove the bills under the rug or make the bills go away. You can't, but with him, he wipes everything clean and calls you his friend. We can only be convinced that his love is so great that he looks at everything we failed at and says, you matter more to me. So what's in the way? God has removed every barrier but that door. Reach out your hand. Reach out your heart. And answer him. <laughs>